Good morning. Happy Thursday, everyone. As I always say, praise God. He's awakened us to another day and another opportunity to fellowship with our Creator. Another chance to focus on Him and His will, His perfect will for our lives. Praise God. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for creating this environment, this world, these people, these plants, these beautiful sunrises and sunsets, the mountains, all the glorious things that came from your mind and your heart. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your glorious, beautiful creation. And we thank you for creating and purchasing this opportunity for us to claim you as our God through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for your perfect plan to redeem us from the pit of hell paid the price for our salvation, and we're very, very thankful, Father. We're very thankful, because we could not do it on our own. We needed you to choose us first, and then, in agreement, we could complete the relationship and seal salvation through faith in your son Jesus thank you father and I pray that the lesson that we hear this day um, increases our faith our knowledge our dependence on you in Jesus name I thank you father and I pray amen amen so today's daily devotional <clears throat> is titled Live in Peace Together from the book of Romans chapter 14 verses 13 through 19 <clears throat> and it reads Let us not therefore judge one another anymore but judge this rather that no man but a stumbling block or an occasion to fall his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walketh thou not charitably. Destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. This is a call for unity, for unity among the brethren. Live in peace together. There is so much division 
in the world. The world is full of selfishness and self-centeredness, which is the root of division, in my opinion. There's nothing more contributing to division than self-centeredness. That's what caused Satan to turn on his God. Thinking about himself instead of glorifying and praising God for who he is, for his glory. We'll continue today's lesson. We're covering section 2C today. And it's titled, Gifts to the Church. <clears throat> Our reference is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 and 12. And it reads, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And the commentary reads, the apostle lists five ministry gifts Christ has placed in the church. These gifts are to individual Christians who are to serve the spiritual needs of the church. The nine spiritual gifts named in 1 Corinthians 12 operate through individual believers. Thus, Christ's ministers, as here described, are his gifts to the church. They retain a dependence on him and recognize that their sufficiency stems from his marvelous grace. The list begins with apostles. Marvin Vincent wrote, The distinguishing features of an apostle in the New Testament sense were a commission directly from Christ, being a witness of the resurrection, special inspiration, supreme authority, accrediting by miracles, unlimited commission to preach and to find or found churches. Prophets are named next. The Hebrew word for prophet means literally one who is inspired of God. The prophets all felt themselves to be spiritual leaders commissioned by God to warn their contemporaries of the perils of wickedness, to point the way to true religion, and to give guidance on moral issues. <clears throat> That's from Harper's uh, Bible Dictionary. A prophet's message might take the form of prediction, doctrine, or exhortation. Then Paul mentions evangelists. The evangelist is one who shares the wondrous story of salvation and the cross, thereby clearly presenting saving truth. He was the traveling missionary of the early church, preaching Christ and urging people to recognize the claims Christ has on their life. Finally, Paul lists pastors and teachers. The dual role of these individuals is described in Acts chapter 20, verse 28. 
Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Why has God placed the leadership offices in the church? Paul said they were given to fully equip God's people to labor in their appointed service. It is the business of those who fill these offices to get believers ready to serve as workers in the kingdom of the Lord. When a church is spiritually, spiritually alive, believers will be motivated to actively engage in witnessing and working so the purpose of Christ may be fully realized. Everything that is done in a church should be designed to build up the body of Christ. The church always faces the danger of individuals being overcome by spiritual pride and drawing attention that should go to the body. The offices and gifts given by Christ are to build up congregations. And so, God provides for his body nourishing ministers to direct, reveal, and teach us what God's will is. And those gifts are described in this section of our lesson. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors and teachers, they all edify Christ and direct and instruct the body of Christian believers to obedience in the Father, to seek the Father, to glorify Christ by imitating Him. I'm going to stop here. I will continue our lesson tomorrow with section 3 titled Mature in Christ Together. So this is the body maturing together in Christ. All right. So thank you for your your patience and your uh, attention. I pray that someone watches this video and is inspired to seek God uh, at a more mature level, so that they might grow in knowledge and obedience to Him. And as always, be blessed and have. Wonderful day.